ASEAN as a regional uh, organization, which the Philippines is uh, very proud to say that uh, we have been one of, we were one of the co-founders of this. And it goes without saying that we have a great stake in the success of uh, ASEAN. And uh, ASEAN, uh, as you might be aware, envisions a community that will encompass all facets of life as reflected in its retailers, the political security, economic, and social cultural. ASEAN has come a long way since its uh, founding on August 8, 1967. Uh, at that time, there was a Cold War, different ideologies divided the region, but over the years, ASEAN has succeeded in espousing cooperation, promoting peace and security in the region, so much so that ASEAN is now looked upon as a model for regional cooperation. So it would be a great honor for the Philippines to be chairman of the ASEAN next year when the ASEAN celebrates its 50th anniversary. This milestone event will be an occasion for ASEAN not only to reflect on its uh, achievements and successes during the last 50 years, but also will be an opportunity for ASEAN to prepare for the great challenges ahead uh, for the region and for the world. Uh, you can see I have a, the outline of my presentation. There are actually two main points, not three. Uh, first is the, uh, I'll just uh, go very briefly on the significant developments in the ASEAN to give a picture of our economic growth, the establishment of the uh, ASEAN community, and the ASEAN vision for 2025. I then will go into uh, aspects of the Philippine chairmanship of ASEAN, uh, our theme, uh, our thematic priorities, and uh, a number of the uh, activities, so commemorative activities, which uh, we envision uh, to have uh, next year in honor of the 50th uh, anniversary of ASEAN. Well, ASEAN is now a very huge market, 629 million people population and counting. It's the third largest behind China and India. In terms of uh, GDP, the uh, ASEAN GDP is now estimated at 2.43 trillion US dollars, or seventh largest in the world, and the third largest in Asia, with foreign direct investment last year amounting to about uh, 120 billion US dollars. Uh, in trade figures, uh, it's been estimated that uh, total trade with the ASEAN region amounted to about 2.27 trillion US dollars uh, last year, and uh, a GDP also of uh, 2.43 trillion US dollars in 2015, or a GDP per capita of US dollars, 3,867. And as you can see, here are some statistics of each of the uh, ASEAN uh, member states. If you could just take a quick look. Now, um, consistent with the principles of the ASEAN Community Vision of 2025, uh, namely a community that will deepen cooperation, uh, not only amongst uh, the members, but also with our dialogue partners in the uh, interest and with the goal of developing mutually beneficial and friendly relations. So in many ways, ASEAN is at the forefront or the driver's seat in a number of relations with our dialogue or external partners. And these, inc these uh, include the ASEAN plus three, which is uh, ASEAN plus China, Japan, and the uh, Republic of Korea. The East Asia Summit, which is ASEAN plus Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, Republic of Korea, Russia, and the United States. Then we have our plus one dialogue partners, and also the ASEAN Regional Forum, which is the ASEAN plus 17 states. Now, all of these uh, mechanisms or uh, <clears throat> groups uh, meet on a regular basis, either during the leader summits and or the ASEAN ministerial meeting. The ASEAN community uh, was formally launched on December 31, 2015, 
that is last year. And this marks ASEAN's further consolidation since its creation in 1967. In their declaration of the establishment of the, A of the AEC in Kuala Lumpur last November, the ASEAN leaders said, quote, the realization of the ASEAN community has set a milestone in the integration process and will ensure lasting peace, security, and resilience in an outward-looking region with economies that are vibrant, competitive, and highly integrated, and an inclusive community that is embedded with a strong sense of togetherness and common identity. In the next slide, you'll see a uh, very brief description of how the ASEAN community uh, looks like. There are three pillars. There's the ASEAN Political Security Community, the ASEAN Economic Community, and the ASEAN Social Cultural Community. The uh, ASEAN Political Community, or the APSC, uh, essentially uh, uh, brings forth the uh, vision and uh, objective of the member states uh, to have a common and shared stake in being resilient and promoting a rules-based, outward-looking region that enjoys lasting peace, security, and stability. Uh, it follows the principles of the ASEAN Charter and using consultation and consensus building and adheres to the use of peaceful means in resolving disputes. The ASEAN Economic Community is already taking shape with the free movement of goods and services, capital and skilled labor, with a view to improving the lives of all ASEAN citizens. It will be a single market and production base, a highly competitive economic region and equitable economic development as a major goal, and one fully integrated into the global economy. This will also help boost ASEAN's inter-regional economy as well as ASEAN's attractiveness to uh, external economic partners, uh, including having ASEAN as a, as a desirable investment destination, uh, given the fact that we have a consumer base of 622 million people. And uh, as many of you might know, ASEAN has been a region of continued economic growth, and its economic engine continues to hum even with slower growth in other parts of the world. On the third pillar, that is the ASCC, or the uh, Social Cultural Community, the ASEAN leaders have stressed that community building must make a difference in the lives of all the ASEAN citizens, who should be beneficiaries of a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN. This part of community building will be the focus of uh, a number of initiatives, such as uh, programs to narrow the development gap within and among the ASEAN member states, and to widen and deepen connectivity linkages in the region. I'd now like to turn to the ASEAN Vision 2025. And uh, this is a major uh, development in ASEAN. And it's because it's important that the process of community building uh, be sustained and continued in the years ahead. And the ASEAN leaders have committed to continued regional integration over the next decade. And this was confirmed by adopting the uh, Kuala Lumpur Declaration on ASEAN 2025, which is forging ahead together. And uh, this document sets to uh, achieve targets by 2025. The community's launch is the culmination of a number of uh, initiatives of regional integration, which have taken place over nearly five decades. And it actually marks the completion by the ASEAN member states of the blueprints for the three community pillars, which I mentioned after the leaders' meet, uh, meeting in 2007, uh, decided to move the goal of establishing the ASEAN economic community to 2015 from the original target of 2025. So I wish to. Uh, focus on the chairmanship of uh, the Philippines, but my previous presentation was to give you a context under which the Philippine chairmanship will be uh, moving forward next year with our ASEAN partners. So taking off from the chairmanship of Lao PDR, 
which was very successful. The Philippines will steer and guide the ASEAN, hopefully, during this milestone year, uh, 2017. And in keeping with Article 31 of the ASEAN Charter, the Philippines endeavors to uh, carry out the following. We seek to actively promote and enhance the interests and well-being of ASEAN, including efforts to strengthen and build the ASEAN community through policy initiatives, coordination, consensus, and cooperation. We will seek to ensure the centrality of ASEAN and ensure an effective and timely response by ASEAN to urgent issues and crises uh, affecting the region. This would include providing good offices and other arrangements to immediately address these concerns. We will endeavor to represent ASEAN in strengthening and promoting closer relations with our external partners. And of course, we will be ready or hopefully ready to carry other tasks and functions as may be mandated uh, by the ASEAN. The Philippine uh, chairmanship of ASEAN will officially begin on New Year, January 1, 2017. And uh, as I said, this of course coincides with the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. The theme the Philippines has chosen for our chairmanship is, quote, partnering for change, engaging the world. This theme was first unveiled by President uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte during the uh, turnover uh, of the ASEAN chairmanship to the Philippines in Vientiane last September 8th at the closing ceremony of the 28th and 29th ASEAN summits and related summits. Now, very briefly, in uh, explaining this theme, in partnering for change, what we envision is a change aimed for a positive change in the lives of the peoples of ASEAN. As a regional organization and community, ASEAN has us at its disposal an array of mechanisms and initiatives that should significantly impact on the lives of ASEAN citizens. These include measures such as strengthening the capacities of micro, small, and medium enterprises, promoting and protecting the welfare of migrant workers, ensuring social protection for the vulnerable sector of society, securing the future for succeeding generations by promoting the protection and sustainability of the environment. In engaging the world, we believe that a core strength of ASEAN as a regional grouping is its ability and experience in being in the driver's seat in expanding the regional grouping's relations with other countries, and also in dealing with them in tackling non-traditional and traditional security threats, while at the, main, uh, while at the same time maintaining ASEAN centrality and independence as an ingredient of its uh, success. So we envision greater interaction by ASEAN with the international community, including our regional partners, by highlighting the importance of ASEAN to both the region and the rest of the world, and in so doing, advancing the mutual benefits and interests of all countries, particularly in addressing the new and emerging non-traditional security threats. In the words of President Duterte, our theme reflects our resolve to consolidate our community for our peoples with a sense of togetherness and common identity ready and able to take our rightful place in the global community of nations. And as chair, the Philippines will ensure that it guides ASEAN towards a path of stability, security, and growth. Now, uh, along with these, uh, this basic uh, theme, uh, we also uh, have adopted a symbol or a, a logo for ASEAN 50, uh, this was designed to capture the overall vision uh, and inspire change. Uh, the colors, elements all have a meaning and they, uh, have a, and they represent in a holistic way uh, ASEAN itself and uh, also the role of the Philippines in this. Uh, 
uh, maybe later you can ask me the meaning of this uh, of this uh, logo. But uh, everything there does have a meaning. I'll go into that maybe later if you're interested. But it does uh, very, uh, I, I think, uh, succinct, succinctly uh, reflect the basic uh, theme of that, we, uh, that I mentioned earlier. Now turning to that theme of partnering for change, engaging the world, is really uh, also a, a reflection of our advocacy as a country to promote cooperation with uh, and among our neighbors in ASEAN and of course our partner countries. And uh, President Duterte in his acceptance speech uh, at the ASEAN summit in Vientiane last uh, September said that, quote, we will pursue initiatives and enhance cooperation with global, global partners to ensure that ASEAN lives and ASEAN citizens live in peace, stability, and security and growth while maintaining the ASEAN centrality, unity, and solidarity. And this will set the tone for the Philippine chairmanship uh, during the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. Now, in addition to the basic uh, theme that I mentioned, we do have a number of so-called thematic, uh, thematic priorities. And these priorities uh, are, will be used by the Philippines during this chairmanship uh, in guiding the various initiative and, uh, initiatives and activities and outcome documents uh, that will result during our chairmanship. Uh, these thematic priorities as presented here are a result of uh, a number of extensive and intense consultations with all relevant agencies in the Philippines and are intended to cover all the, uh, the three pillars of ASEAN. And uh, these priorities uh, will be dealing uh, or be centering on areas such as defense, security, trade and investment, science and technology, finance, transportation, uh, and communication, health, women, children, youth, nutrition, and the environment. So as you can see, the uh, six thematic priorities are as follows. One, people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN, peace and stability in the region, maritime security and cooperation, inclusive and innovation-led growth, a resilient ASEAN, and ASEAN as a model of regionalism and the global player. Now the core goals of the three ASEAN community pillars, uh, as I mentioned, are reflected in these thematic priorities. And uh, we believe that uh, in so doing, and if we can successfully accomplish all the uh, activities and uh, outcomes under each of these priorities, we will have successfully contributed to the uh, enhancement of the three major pillars of ASEAN. Perhaps I could go very briefly then in an explanation of each of these uh, thematic priorities. And I'll start off with the first, that is a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN. Uh, and under this uh, thematic priority, what we have in mind is to seek and promote the following. We want to have a community that upholds human rights, a high quality of life, and equal access to opportunities for ASEAN citizens. An ASEAN, an ASEAN community that improves access of all to social services, especially uh, by the vulnerable groups. A community that provides basic necessities to its citizens, prioritizing health care and improved nutrition and a community that promotes the importance of the professionalism of civil servants in ASEAN member states in terms of uh, regional development and community building. Now to realize an inclusive ASEAN community, we need to invest in our human capital. And this can be achieved by advancing universal access to education and health, and we also need to step up our efforts to uplift conditions of the marginalized in our societies by providing genuine access to social services that will not only promote and uphold their human rights, but also assist them into becoming more productive uh, citizens in the region. And in support of these uh, thematic and specific priorities, 
the Philippines is planning to organize a number of activities uh, to help ensure that we can adopt deliverables in line with our chairmanship. And these would include consultations uh, to be undertaken in the pursuit of uh, outcome documents that would reflect ASEAN's resolve to promote and protect the rights of vulnerable groups. We also envision activities to be organized to support these efforts, such as uh, thematic workshops, uh, studies, and also conferences on topics addressing social protection and gender responsive issues. We will seek to promote policy coherence and capacity building towards a healthy diet and proper nutrition for ASEAN citizens. And we will also seek to coordinate mechanisms in line with a uh, uh, holistic approach that will help promote awareness and advocacy in the prevention uh, of uh, health infections, etc. The role of the civil service as a catalyst for achieving Vision 2025 through the conduct of uh, forums and also publications will be pursued. Turning to uh, the second thing, that's peace and stability in the region. Now the core message uh, of this priority uh, touches on upholding uh, peaceful uh, coexistence and enhancing regional partnerships among the member states of ASEAN. And we wish to see the following during our chairmanship. We wish to have a community that will strengthen its cooperation in, in combating and preventing the use of dangerous and illicit drugs. A community that aims to counter violent extremism in all its forms and uh, manifestations and a community that resolves conflicts and disputes through peaceful means and strengthening ties among its member states. By building on ongoing efforts for the work of ASEAN, for example, uh, in the uh, work of the ASEAN Institute for Peace and Reconciliation and other ASEAN bodies. Now, a characteristic of uh, ASEAN and the people of ASEAN that has uh, helped uh, turn ASEAN into a resilient and successful regional grouping is the approach we have adopted in, in ASEAN in addressing uh, issues, uh, especially uh, disputes which may arise. Uh, and this is the adoption of our non-confrontational approach or the ASEAN way, which has been used successfully in resolving differences. Uh, a preference for peaceful uh, modes of settling disputes has set the tone for the ASEAN in the years, and we will continue to do this. In fact, it's my contention that uh, Southeast Asia has been free from any major uh, interstate armed conflict for the past half century because of the uh, adoption of this ASEAN way, which in fact is enshrined in the Bangkok, Bangkok Declaration of 1967. Now, ASEAN's organizational strength, specifically its ability to respond to major uh, geopolitical and economic developments uh, is also another ingredient of his success. And we intend to, uh, to uh, uphold this. We also recognize the strategic relevance and importance of ASEAN-led mechanisms and their contributions to regional peace and security. And it's our intention to strengthen these mechanisms. And these include, for example, the East Asia Summit and the other uh, fora and mechanisms of defense, disaster management, maritime security, transnational crime, and drug matters. The Philippines is also uh, determined to continue the campaign against terrorism in all its forms and uh, manifestations, and we are developing a strategy against terrorism as well as a national action plan on countering violent extremism. We will host the, uh, in 2017, the ASEAN Ministerial Meeting on Transnational Crime, and will also co-chair with the European Union an ASEAN Regional Forum Workshop on mainstreaming the prevention of violent extremism. We're also ready to work with ASEAN to address terrorism and violent extremism in a full and comprehensive manner, and this will include intelligence gathering and sharing battling financing of terrorism. Uh, and this will also uh, extend to prevention and arrest, to interdiction and prosecution.
Stability and security are therefore necessary conditions for our region to prosper. And uh, it's important uh, that we give this priority in 2017. We will also be looking at possible instruments that can send a strong message on countering violent extremism and terrorism. On the drug menace, the Philippines will be looking at ways to actively implement the provisions of the recently adopted ASEAN work plan on securing communities against illicit drugs. This may involve socialization of the uh, work plan among our local authorities and communities so that we can support a drug-free ASEAN by 2025 and actively seek the partnership of our dialogue partners in supporting specific projects uh, along these lines in 2017. Going to our third priority, which is on maritime security and cooperation, what I would like to emphasize uh, on this particular priority is the need to have an ASEAN community that recognizes international law as the basis for peaceful conflict resolution, and also a community that intensifies maritime security and cooperation. A clear-cut example of how, for example, the ASEAN way has come to guide relations between and among the member states of ASEAN with non-ASEAN members, especially on key issues of concern to the region. An example is the subject of the South China Sea, where uh, the declaration of the Code of Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, or the DOC, were signed, was signed by the ASEAN member states in China in 2002, and affirming the value and use, usefulness of the ASEAN way, the DOC has called for a peaceful and durable solution of differences and disputes among countries concerned. And we are hopeful uh, in reaching uh, or coming to an agreement on a framework on the code of conduct on the South China Sea next year. In the meantime, we will build on confidence uh, building measures which have already been agreed upon uh, by ASEAN and China, including the MFA to MFA hotlines or foreign office hotlines and the code on uh, unplanned encounters at sea or queues. The Philippines and the rest of ASEAN are also committed to a rules-based, people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN community. And we will strongly emphasize this during our chairmanship. And we will also affirm the, needs, the need for a rules-based approach for the peaceful settlement of disputes in accordance with recognized principles of international law, uh, including the 1982 UNCLOS. And the Philippines will continue our advocacy for the full respect for the rule of law and the full respect for legal and diplomatic processes in the resolution of disputes. Now all of this uh, will of course not be achieved overnight. We will have to organize a number of workshops, seminars, and of course the regular meetings on uh, these various issues. But we feel that it's important that uh, we keep this issue as one of our priorities and make it a major objective during our chairmanship. And we hope that in the process, uh, aside from achieving uh, some outcomes, as I mentioned, we also hope to have some declarations, perhaps, and other possible outcome deliverables, uh, which would summarize and reflect the efforts of ASEAN uh, towards uh, maritime cooperation, uh, <coughs> etc., and maritime security. Let me now turn to the next priority, that's inclusive innovation-led growth. In our view, this represents the ASEAN Economic Community Pillar's main efforts to realize the following. A community that heightens connectivity among member states to improve economic synergy. An ASEAN community that is conducive for business and opportunities and investment, including for MSMEs and MMEs, and a community that supports innovation which would lead to inclusive growth and development. Also, to further address the many social ills confronting our societies, uh, inclusive economic growth is essential and needs to be ensured. 
So we need to develop the capacity for the growth of uh, ASEAN's micro, small, and medium enterprises so that they can be a force in spurring entrepreneurship and also boosting uh, economic activities. Progress also rests on the back of a stable, interconnected, and integrated infrastructure. And the master plan on ASEAN uh, connectivity in 2025 will help complement and uh, also synergize our integration efforts to give further momentum to uh, connectivity uh, and sub-regional cooperation. And uh, activities such as the BIMP IAGA uh, come to mind. We could make this happen through projects that will physically link ASEAN countries together so as to enhance trade and investment. The Philippines uh, plans to propose several uh, action agenda so that ASEAN economies can become more innovative and integrate MSMEs to a more digital world, as well as reduce the cost of doing business in our countries and also at the cost of developing startups. Meetings will be held, seminars, etc., also to empower the youth and women in entrepreneurship. The next thematic priority we've identified is the resilient ASEAN. What we envision here is the realization of a community that mitigates and manages the risk of uh, possible natural disasters, or not possible, but they are happening. A community that is prepared and united in responding to disasters befalling the member states and a community that promotes the protection of the environment and recognize, recognizes the importance of biodiversity conservation. At the uh, 28th and 29th uh, ASEAN summits, ASEAN and related uh, summits in Vientiane uh, last September, in fact, there was really only one document that was actually signed by the ASEAN leaders. And uh, this was the ASEAN Declaration on One ASEAN, One Response. ASEAN responding to disasters as one in the region and outside the region. And given that the uh, Southeast Asian region is no stranger to natural calamities, for example, in the Philippines, we experience uh, on the average about uh, 20 typhoons a year. The declaration highlights the vision of ASEAN to build a safer, and a disaster resilient region as a move forward uh, as a move forward uh, and also a move to develop unity and solidarity among the 10 ASEAN member countries in responding to disasters within our region. The ASEAN member states also have acknowledged the many perils brought about by man-made and natural disasters through the years and they have recognized the necessity of cooperation uh, towards addressing these activities, mainly through disaster reduction and management. So the Philippines plans to build on these efforts and initiatives, and also focus on developing risk resiliency programs uh, within ASEAN as a whole and among the member states. And I think we should, we will be uh, planning to utilize existing ASEAN institutions, such as the ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance, that was. Uh, put in place uh, primarily to support ASEAN's resiliency when faced with disasters, as well as the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, which was established to care for ASEAN's natural resources. Let me now turn to the uh, next priority, which is ASEAN, a model of regionalism and a global player. This uh, sixth priority highlights ASEAN as a model or will seek to highlight ASEAN as a model of regionalism and a global player. And under this uh, priority, we hope to promote or strengthen further ASEAN as a community that fosters inclusivity and diversity, advocates equal recognition of all member states, a community that strengthens ASEAN's foundations rooted in our history and our vision, and a community that addresses international is issues through a unified stance. The last time the Philippines was chair was in 2007, and the world has also changed a lot since then. 
And while conventional security challenges such as maritime disputes in the South China Sea remain, we are faced by a host of uh, non-traditional security threats which continue to emerge. These include natural disasters uh, associated with climate change, food and energy shortfalls, forced displacement of large populations from countries of origin to, to political unrest, violent uh, extremism and terrorism, uh, health pandemics, trafficking in persons and wildlife, trade in illicit drugs and piracy in the high seas, just to name some. So you can see these are truly challenging times. But we have to recall that ASEAN was born out of the aspiration of our founding fathers to address regional and global challenges uh, so as to ensure peace and security, stability and progress of our peoples. So at the brink of the 50th anniversary of ASEAN as an association and as a community, it's important we encapsulate our past uh, successes and be sure that we can become fully equipped to respond to these existing and emerging challenges and as a result come out as a more prosperous and stronger group. And I think that ASEAN has built the foundation and already has a reputation as a highly resilient and successful uh, grouping. And uh, a number of successes in the past also attest to our organiza organizational strength and our ability to adjust to uh, these uh, developments and uh, geopolitical and economic in nature. For example, uh, the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, or TAC, which has been signed by all members of this ASEAN as high contracting parties, uh, is an important document which comes to mind. Until 1976, ASEAN was characterized as a loose and highly uh, centralized uh, structure or organization with state-to-state uh, -state cooperation mainly being the, the basis of our cooperation, but the TAC has changed all of that by binding all our member ASEAN states as signatories to promote a peaceful and uh, peaceful coexistence and to respect the principle of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and non-interference in internal affairs. Also in 2008, the ASEAN Charter came into being and the Charter has given ASEAN a legal personality and also has profiled it as a rules-based organization. So ASEAN needs to continue and address all of these challenges using all our available mechanisms and documents and uh, agreements. And it's important that um, we also recognize the transboundary nature of many of these uh, security challenges. So all the more that the ASEAN was developed greater cooperation and partnerships, not only within ASEAN, but also with our uh, dialogue partners. So I've uh, tried as briefly as possible to give a presentation of uh, what we hope to achieve on the basis of our six thematic priorities. So maybe at this now I'd like to uh, go quickly into some more of the logistical uh, issues uh, which will also be a part of our chairmanship, uh, primarily the meetings that we will be uh, convening. Uh, I've just uh, shown here some of the major meetings, but I'm quite sure that the other uh, meetings uh, may be more at the expert level. But our major meetings uh, during the uh, chairmanship next year will be the two leaders level summits. Uh, we will um, revert back to that arrangement as uh, you know, this year under the Lao PDR, there was one, basically, one summit or back-to-back -back summits. So now we will be holding uh, two separate summits. Uh, one uh, in the first half of the year, I think in April, and the other in November. We will have about 14 ministerial meetings, 29 senior official meetings. These will be in the three pillars, as I mentioned, political, economic, social. And we'll have more than... Uh, at least, we'll have at least 60 working group meetings already planned. So uh, there will be lots of things going on next year for ASEAN. So uh, everyone is welcome to, to visit us then. Uh, so during our chairmanship, therefore, uh, we plan to uh, be discussing, of course, all of these activities uh, that I mentioned, the priorities during all of these meetings, and uh, we will be aiming to achieve 
the uh, appropriate outcome uh, documents and deliverables as a result of these meetings. And of course, uh, we will be uh, having a number of commemorative meetings. We're planning to host a number of them during the course of next year, at both the, re uh, at the regional and national levels. At the regional level, we have proposed the hosting of a, uh, a number of uh, activities. This would be a, a, an activity uh, or a tribute to the ASEAN Founding Fathers, the ASEAN Youth Social Entrepreneurship Award, the, uh, the ASEAN Biodiversity Heroes uh, uh, activity. This is an ACB-led project that will aim to recognize the outstanding achievements in biodiversity conservation and advocacy in Southeast Asia. Uh, ten citizens, one from each of the ASEAN member states, shall be awarded as a biodiversity hero. We'll also have the ASEAN for Humanity Award, which aims to give recognition to uh, selected outstanding ASEAN citizens in their works in the fields of Southeast Asian studies, political science, the humanities, arts, and culture, in order to advance and highlight the unity amidst the diversity of ASEAN's heritage. And of course, we also plan to hold uh, an ASEAN Day reception in uh, 2017 to celebrate the momentous 50th anniversary of, of ASEAN. That's at the regional level. Uh, for the Philippines, we also plan to host a number of uh, activities uh, at the national level. And uh, just very briefly, these include a, a landmark lighting event, which will take place on the exact day of the founding of uh, ASEAN. And uh, selected areas in the country uh, will hold lighting ceremonies to celebrate the golden anniversary. We also plan to issue commemorative coins, the Philippine uh, Banco Central will be producing 10 million commemorative uh, one peso coins. Uh, we're also coming up with a Philippine chairmanship theme song. Our National Commission on Culture and the Arts uh, uh, will be uh, <coughs> proposing a theme song for our chairmanship to be produced and played during these uh, events. And we're planning to have a we're planning to have a book uh, which will be published entitled the Philippines and ASEAN 50 years of engaging the region. We are going down the list also a coffee table book uh, to be published uh, sometime uh, 2017 to highlight our chairmanship, a postal stamp to be produced uh, by the Philippine Post Office in commemoration of our chairmanship, and uh, continuous dissemination and information on ASEAN integration will be done throughout the year uh, to induce more interest and hopefully excitement in our uh, 50th anniversary. Now, uh, the ASEAN also has a number of uh, ASEAN uh, committees in other countries throughout the world, especially, especially in countries, uh, the, the countries of our dialogue partners. And uh, these uh, third committees, we call them, the ASEAN committees in third countries, will also be uh, undertaking a number of uh, events to support the, uh, our chairmanship and also the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. And uh, uh, I could just probably uh, at this stage uh, focus on what some of the Philippine embassies will be doing across uh, the world next year, uh, in some cases in coordination with our ASEAN partners. For example, the Philippine uh, Embassy in Canberra will be hosting an ASEAN Bazaar and a film showing, uh, which would include uh, ASEAN films. Uh, some posts will be hosting uh, a number of uh, friendship games and sports festivals. And uh, the ASEAN Mission in Geneva, the Philippine Mission in Geneva, uh, will be conducting a forum on ASEAN uh, at the Geneva Center for Security Policy. And also, uh, we hope to have the ASEAN Secretary General as a keynote speaker. Uh, a number of other embassies, such as in uh, Washington, are planning talks and lectures, uh, hopefully by the ASEAN ASG, and perhaps our foreign minister on, in major universities and think tanks, think tanks uh, on the ASEAN uh, and its 50th anniversary. And a number of our ambassadors uh, 
and I believe maybe uh, eventually a number of our committees uh, will be uh, conducting ASEAN awareness campaigns uh, throughout the years in order to uh, elicit uh, greater interest and probably, hopefully, participation of other countries in our activities. So um, that more or less uh, closes my uh, presentation.